right, guys. Party Kid Elite here. Okay. We're gonna play the story right here. He <laughs> finally like that time. Oh, I'm an eye for this. I want to get March's freaking outfit after this. All right, um. All right, I think we're gonna start with her. Okay, let's do with this one. Okay, yep, all right. Guess we teleport. Okay, what? Mm -hmm. hmm. Phew. What's that, Pom Pom? Uh, just got a message from the Xian Shou La Fu. Looks like it'll conflict with our original schedule. Okay, so we just start here. Okay. It's been a while, my friends on the Astral Express. How's your trailblazing expedition going? Uh, it's been freaking crazy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, especially in that dream world. Soon, the Sienjo Law Fu will be holding the Luminary War Dance. Those who have aided the Law Fu in overcoming the crisis are cherished allies of the Sienjo. Thus, on behalf of the Seat of Divine Foresight, I'm extending an invitation to attend the ceremony. Your presence would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. Well, things are getting lively. We've barely recovered from the family's Charmony Festival, and we're already being invited to another special event. Yeah. Face releasing is all about having fun. Yeah, I'm still. Yeah, I'm gonna have fun. Screw that. Why not think about it this way? Our trailblazing expeditions are turning into blast expeditions, where we eat, drink, and play wherever we go. Blast? Expedition? Yeah! Wherever we go, we eat, play, and have a blast! <laughs> so, we should leave March behind to take care of the Express? <laughs> uh, hey! That's not what I meant! I'm all for some fun! I just hope there won't be any surprise party crashers, like... Friday or Saturday! The Sienjo Lawfu has recently overcome a crisis. By holding the war dance, they're demonstrating to everyone that they've returned to a state of peace and safety. But that's what everyone said before we went to Panacone! You'll be totally safe under the family's protection! <laughs> no need to worry. The war dance is not like the Charmony Festival with all its hidden secrets. It's just a festival to honor the Rainbow Arbiter and the Cloud Knights, who fought against the abominations of abundance and protected the Xianzhou ships. Aside from Star Skiff performances, it's mostly martial contests. Nothing too different from the Taikian Roboball contest we've seen before. What do you think, Himiko? Since we've accepted Miss Black Swan's proposal, we should probably head to Amphorius for refueling. Mm, there's certainly no rush. This trailblazing expedition is quite unique, and the Express needs to be fully stocked and prepared before moving on to the next stop. Yeah, I'm curious about that place, too. With Madame Herta's help, I was planning to deliver some Leviathan fossils from Kalinga Abyss to Ron May, member 81 of the Genius Society. It could earn us some favors before we set off. However, oh. it may take a few weeks. Wow. Oh. Aw, so that means... We're not going to the Lawfu. Being an adult means maintaining relationships, whether we like it or not, March. Since we've been invited, it's only right for the Astral Express to attend the ceremony. So, here's the plan. Pom Pom will take everyone to the Sienjo Lafu. Mr. Yang and I will meet up with Ron Mei and fulfill our promise. Meanwhile, you, March, and Don Hung will represent the Express and attend the war dance. What do you two think? Um, I guess this is okay. <laughs> I don't hear any objections. Now that everyone's on board with the plan, it's time to warp to the Xianzhou Lafu. 
Alright, uh, I guess we should talk to people. Okay, let's talk to them. Kalinga Abyss? What does she expect to find there? Current research on the Leviathan merely proves how little we know about such life forms. That's why geniuses are interested in that field. Science is all about uncovering the unknown. Yeah. I'll say this, yeah. Don't miss us too much. <laughs> if I stumble upon some cool Leviathan fossils, I'll bring a few back as souvenirs for you. Alright, well, let's talk to you guys. Himeko really knows how to convince people. <laughs> Between Leviathan fossils and the war dance, the latter definitely sounds more fun. Uh, by the way, Don Hung, this time you'll be taking a stroll with us on the Lafu, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> and just let you two wander around aimlessly on the Lofu by yourselves? <laughs> I don't think so. Plus, Mr. Yang is right. The Ambrosial Arbor crisis just ended, and both the long life and short life species are still feeling uneasy. And that's why Jing Yuan wants to organize the war dance. To show that the Xianzhou Lo Fu is stable and safe. And uh, since he has extended an invitation, it's only right that I visit my old friend. Mm. Alright, back to the Lo Fu. Yeah. Uh, coming back to this place brings back so many memories. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yeah. So here's something for all of you, a poem by March 7, what memory can you spare the details? Uh, I'll say this. Uh, hey, I'm not actually gonna recite a poem. I was just thinking about all the twists and turns we went through when we first arrived on the Sienjo. Yeah, it didn't went well. This time, we're not being forced or enticed or chasing after wanted criminals. And we didn't have to sneak in through the cargo dock. This trip has been incredibly smooth. Quite unusual, I must say. Yeah, definitely usual. We're so easily please, I actually feel sorry for us. <laughs> I'll say this. Such is the fate of us nameless, I suppose. Oh, hey, my boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is the Starskip Haven always this crowded? Oh, there are so many people here. I can barely hear anything. Yan Ching said General Jing Yuan sent him to welcome us. But where is he? Well, let's wait for him in front of the loom. It's the most prominent landmark on the dock. Alright, I guess we'll go over here. Alright, let's wait. Okay, oof. Oof. Hey, you guys! Hold on a moment! Well, I've not seen you before. Uh, did they just call us? Uh, look at their outfits. They're from Penacony, right? Oh yeah. I can't, I can't believe you just forget about that. Are you familiar with the Sienjo Lafu? <laughs> we know a little bit about it. What do you need? We're from Penacony. Maybe you've heard of it. We came to this ship to gather interesting materials for making dream bubbles. Mm. Oh, we just left there. Oh, talk about coincidence! That's great! Do you know any must-see attractions on the Lofu? Uh, you come to the right people. Exactly! We're Sienjo experts! <laughs> We've been here. Uh, most of the tourists around at the moment are here to attend the war dance. And that's why we're here too. Yeah, we know about that ceremony. But isn't the fighting ring still closed? I've heard the ring was actually converted from a huge decommissioned Lafu fighter jet. So it's even larger than a regular star skip? 
That's what it sounds like, so it's even bigger than uh, Raiden. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about this one. Um, I gotta look that up. I probably don't remember, but... Um, Okay, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm probably gonna look that up. I'm doing this one. No doubt about it. It's a massive fighter jet. It's got to be larger than a civilian star skiff. But for now, all we can do is wait until the war dance starts in a few weeks, before we can board it. We've still got work to do, so we can't just sit around waiting for it to start. That's why we're asking you about some must-see attractions. Mm. We're looking for unique experiences that you won't find on Penacony. Our clients love these kinds of dream bubbles the most. Uh, you're the expert here. <laughs> Give them some suggestions. Uh, oh, shit. I don't even know what to choose. Um, shit. Well, hmm. I'll do it with the first one. I don't care. Hmm, good idea. The everyday vibe of the Aurum Alley is a rare find on the planet of festivities. Everyday vibe? Yeah, our clients have had their fair share of adrenaline pumping dreamscapes. Hmm, maybe something down to earth would touch their hearts. Thanks for the suggestion. We'll head to the Aurum Alley to gather materials. Maybe we'll run into each other there in a couple of days. Uh, look, Yan Ching's here. Yep. Uh, really? Let's go catch up with him. Let go. What a different experience looking down the stairs. There you are. Everyone, this way. Yep. Hey, everyone. It's been a while. Indeed, it is. Well, it doesn't feel like it's been that long since we last saw you. But, Yen Ching, are you? What's up, Miss March? Uh, they say kids grow up really fast. Uh, Yen Ching, are you a little bit taller than before? Is he? <sighs> We've only been away for a few months. <laughs> a long time no see. Yeah, you're definitely taller. Why? Why would you want to pinch him? Should I do that? No, fuck it. Huh? Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but after our previous adventures, I've become suspicious of whoever greets us first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that's fair. Ugh, do you have to be suspicious around me too? You know, the last time we came to the Sienjo, the first person who greeted us was. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I get it. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Seriously, I've never seen the Lafu so lively before. I was a bit worried that holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis might be too soon, but seeing the bustling Starskiff Haven, I understand why General Jing Yuan chose this timing. Yep, there's people from other delves and travelers like you three who've come from afar. With the war dance coming up, there's a huge number of visitors pouring into the Starskiff Haven. The Cloud Knights are working hard to keep the security tight. The General said this ceremony would help the Sienjo Lafu recover from the crisis. It's a way to showcase our martial spirit, reassure people, boost morale, and attract visitors from other planets to promote trade and peace. <laughs> By the way, the Sienjo Alliance places great importance on this ceremony too. The Sienjo ships, the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing, have both sent messengers to offer their blessings. Alright. Ooh. Yeah, I wonder if you've heard of it. It's known as the Star Forge, and it's responsible for providing more than half of the Cloud Knight's armaments. 
The Xianzhou Juming both skilled craftsmasters. And General Huayan is a top-notch craftsman himself. Ah, if only I could get a sword forged by him, I'd be on Cloud Nine. By the way, Yanqing, where are we headed next? Yeah, what's our next destination? Ah, I'm sorry for talking your ear off. The General wants to catch up with you at the Palace of Astrum. He's been eager to hear about how the Express has been doing. <laughs> it's funny how he tries to act all mature, but whenever it comes to something he's interested in, you can really see his childish side. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I agree. I didn't mean to skip it. I keep doing that. Ooh. Oh, wait, is there a mo monster? All units, assemble quickly! Get ready to protect the crowd! Huh. I just mentioned security, and now all of a sudden something's gone wrong. Excuse me, I need to go check out the situation. Okay, like, whatever you fear will happen, happen. Uh, I'm not saying that, I'm saying this. Yep. Um, we'll go with you. Ooh. Oh. Protect the civilians. I'll deal with him. Oh, we're gonna fight, are we? We're gonna play as him? Wait, what is this? Okay, blah blah blah. I did not pick the right characters for this. Fuck. Arson? Boris in here. This oh, come now. on. Well, hold on. I did not pick the right characters. Step. Dreams do come true. All right. Next time, I gotta pick different characters. I didn't mean that. Okay. Not good. Thanks for the help. Uh, uh, sorry, no time to chat. Uh, could you give me back my? Uh. All right, hold on before I do anything. Shit. All right, there. Wait, my sword. Uh, let's just get down to business first. I'm yeah. sorry. But I'm afraid we'll have to put our plans on hold for now. I need to find out what's going on. All right. While we appreciate your rescue, my Sienjo friends, don't you think it's a bit too much to detain us and our cargo? Oh, the IPC. Sorry, but we've been ordered to detain you and your cargo for inspection until we figure out the source of the attack. Once we're done with the formalities, we'll let you and your cargo go. But this shipment isn't even meant for the Lafu. And it's IPC's patented technology. But who do you think you are to conduct an inspection? According to the protocol, all cargo arriving on the Lafu must go through inspection. Oh, but we didn't officially enter your dock at all. We just sought refuge in your dock because we were attacked by the Borisans. Looks like this argument could go on forever. Let's not get involved in a heated dispute that won't lead to a resolution. All right. Yeah, everyone got attacked. Who's in charge here? I need some answers. It's my fault. We let our guard down for a moment. I take full responsibility. With the war dance approaching, safety should be a top priority. Now, tell me, how did Boris and prisoners end up in Starskiff Haven? According to the protocol, Boris and prisoners should be held on a Starskiff and taken directly to the Shackling prison under strict supervision without ever touching the ground. Who allowed a prisoner transport ship to dock at the passenger terminal? 
Please don't blame this captain. This incident involves the Ju Ming's diplomatic vessel. Who are you? I'm Lu Ju, an officer of the patrol defense squad. Thank you for your help, Lieutenant Yen Ching. The situation unfolded rapidly and it shouldn't be held against the captain. Here's what happened. An IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison just before arriving, and the Ju Ming's diplomatic vessel came to the rescue. They fought off the Borison pirates and imprisoned them on their ship. So, an IPC ship was attacked by the Borison near the Lafu, and the Ju Ming envoys saved them? Uh, sounds complicated. Honestly, it gives me a headache too. The Ju Ming diplomatic ship, adhering to standard procedure, docked at the passenger terminal to hand these criminals over to the La Fu. You know, with all the outsiders flooding onto the La Fu, the Starskiff lanes are under immense pressure. The Boris and Desperados decided to put up a fight before the prisoner transport Starskiff could get there. And that's what you just witnessed. We'll make sure these prisoners are sent to the Shackling prison as soon as possible. I see. It's an unusual situation indeed. I'll report it to the security department of the Realm Keeping Commission and ask for their cooperation in handling the aftermath. <sighs> Maybe I should gather more details from others so that the Seed of Divine Foresight can have a better understanding of the situation. Oh, you look much mature now, Yenqing. Yep. Please don't tease me, Miss March. <laughs> The situation on the Sienjo before the war dance is like a calm lake that can be disturbed by even the smallest pebble, capable of generating far-reaching ripples with even the slightest disturbance. What are those people? I mean, those monsters we just dealt with. Yeah. I know they're cold balls, right? You called them. Oh, I'm gonna be funny right here. Those werewolf monsters are known as Borison. They are abominations of abundance, and we've been fighting them for a very long time. The Borison have been a powerful force for a long time, plundering and enslaving many worlds. The threat they pose is just as terrible as the Swarm Disaster, and the Alliance even had a fierce war with them three decades ago. Dang. Their presence has faded over the years, but who would have thought? According to that officer, they attacked an IPC ship near the Senjo Lo Fu. Such a brazen attack seems quite unusual to me. Yeah, that's what I find strange too. It seems like the IPC and the Borison have some serious grudges. Well, enough with the chit chat. The General wants me to take you to the Palace of Astrum. I'd love to chit-chat a little longer, but there are some things that can't be left unchecked. Hmm? Is it a serious matter? Maybe you'll need our help in hunting down the Borison? Yeah. Thank you, but it's no big deal. By the way, that young lady who just appeared, she took my sword. I'm thinking of filing a lost property report at the Realm Keeping Commission to see if I can get it back. <laughs> I doubt she did it on purpose. Oh, shoot. Uh, perhaps she's around here somewhere. Shouldn't we take a look? All right. Let's not keep the general waiting. Don't worry. There aren't many people out there with that kind of talent. It shouldn't be too hard to find her. Yeah. What's with that look? There sure are a lot of troublemakers around. Nah, that looks bad. Yep, that looks bad. Alright. Success and failure are pretty determined. Uh, give me a second. I gotta be back. Uh, uh, go. Alright, what's next? Right. <laughs> it's been a long journey, Elder Hwaiyan. Thank you for your presence. <laughs> Don't mention it. 
Thank you for taking the time to welcome me. Ooh, who's this old guy? Ooh. General, I brought our guests from the Express. Uh, oh, I'm sorry for my bad timing. I didn't know you were meeting a guest, General. Don't worry, you're just in time. <laughs> it's been a while, my friends from the Astral Express. Yeah, been a while. How everything going, General? I dream about you on Pangoni. Did you miss us? I'll say this. Sure, how couldn't I have? It's not often we find such moments to reunite and enjoy one another's presence. Mm -hmm. uh, since when did she and General Ching Yuan become such good buddies, Don Hung? They seem to be having a great time. <laughs> a lot must have happened without our knowledge. At least I hope that's the case. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to General Hua Yin. He's the Arbiter General of the Xianzhou Zhu Ming, known as the Flaming Heart. <laughs> no need to be so formal. I'm just a tourist here, no different from other tourists who've come to attend the ceremony. Elder Hua Yin is not only one of the Arbiter Generals, but also the Furnace Master of the Artisanship Commission. Besides his martial skills, he excels in forging various weapons. Such talents are unique, even among the Arbiter Generals. Ooh. Be it Arbiter General or Furnace Master, these are merely titles given to me long ago. I've retired several times already, but with the current change in circumstances, the Marshal has called me back to duty. And I had no choice but to answer the call. Mm. Well, in the end, I'm to blame. Living such a long life naturally brings its share of disapproval. It's, it's an, an honor, honor to, to meet, meet you, General Huayan. Oh, they said it at the same time. It's my honor to meet you, General Huayan. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Glad to meet you, General. No need to be all formal. Today I'm just a guest on the lawful, the same as all of you. So, these three are the ones you mentioned, Jing Yuin? The heroes who helped you with the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Oh, there she is. She's right there. Why do they keep doing this kind of thing? She's literally right there. Right there. Right in our face. Indeed. There's Don Hong, March 7th, and her. Without their help, I'm afraid the Law Fu might not have easily overcome this crisis. Mm -hmm. So, the Imbiberter Lune's reincarnation has returned to the Law Fu and will attend the war dance. I'd love to have a drink with you, should the chance present itself. You're more than welcome, General Huayan. And this young friend is... Yan Ching, my apprentice. He remains by my side as my retainer due to his youth, which I hope will season him with experience. He will stand for the Law Fu's Cloud Knights in the upcoming war dance, ready to take on all kinds of challenges. Mm hmm. Great, great! It's a real treat to see so many talented young people around here today. Yep. I almost forgot. This is my apprentice, Yu Li. Yu Li. Ooh, there she is. Oh, look at that smirk. <laughs> uh, it's you! Oh, it's you. Hello. Oh, you two already know each other? Guess we don't need any introductions then. What a coincidence! I was afraid I'd have trouble finding this girl. Oh? Now you've piqued my curiosity. Tell me, how did you two become acquainted? She 
help me capture the escaped Borison prisoners at the Starskiff Haven. Allow me to express my gratitude for you. But when you left, you took my flying sword with you. Your flying sword? <laughs> oh, so that's why I found a dagger in my bag. Turns out it's yours. Yes, it is. Now that we've met again, I hope... <laughs> nope, that won't do. What? Can't give it a sword back? Won't do? Uh, you want your sword back, right? Well, you can't just take it back. On the Jooming, when you lose your sword on the battlefield, you have to reclaim it on the battlefield. As for this little sword, it was supposed to strike that escaped Borison prisoner. But unfortunately, its owner's agitated state caused it to fly off like a kite with a broken string. And it missed its target. By the way, if I hadn't caught it and helped it hit its mark, that Borison prisoner would have gotten away. Hold on a second, Lee. You took my sword without even asking, and now you're refusing to give it back? <sighs> so much for Lafu Swordmasters. What did you just say? If you just stepped up and took your sword back from me fair and square, <laughs> I would have totally respected you. But nope, you tried to play it down, expecting me to just hand it back to you like it's nothing. In front of everyone! Ooh. With all due respect, you don't honor your sword. So you don't deserve it. Hasn't anyone told you that taking without asking is stealing? If you want to settle this with swords, fine. Let's have a one-on-one -on -one duel right now. Ooh. Yang Ching. <laughs> well, that's more like it. Just be careful. Because I'm not as easy to handle as the Borison. Uh, you too. Be quiet and apologize to Yen Ching. Ooh. <laughs> hey! Whose side are you on, Grandpa? <laughs> I. um. I don't take sides. <laughs> it's a small misunderstanding, and an apology would be too much. I've heard about the Zhu Ming's incredible swordplay and craftsmanship. Most notably, the legendary Flame Wheel Octet. Seeing Miss Yun Li, who is among those ranks today, well, I must say, she definitely has that fiery edge. <laughs> Such grandiose names. Some folks love to spin these fancy titles, trying to set the Cloud Knights apart. Well, everyone, Elder Hua Yen and I have some business to discuss. For now, Yang Ching, why don't you entertain our guests and take Miss Yun Li to the inn? I'll find another chance to talk with you all. I'd like to express my gratitude to the Astral Express for helping the Law Food during the crisis. That's so kind of you. I mean, you've already thanked us so many times. Yeah. Please forgive me for coming at an inconvenient time. You needn't apologize, General Huayan. All right, Yun Li. Take this opportunity to clear things up with Yen Ching. Yeah, yeah. It's better to make friends than enemies. But I won't be heading to the inn just yet. I want to visit Lingsha. She just arrived in the Lafu and could use some help settling in. Yen Ching. Once you've helped our guests get settled, go to the Artisanship Commission for me. I've heard about the attack and the detainment of the IPC ship. Chingzu sent word that the IPC members are protesting and wish to have their cargo back. See if you can calm them down. Don't get aggressive. Just make it clear that the Sienjo La Fu has no intention of violating their rights. <laughs> I'm on it. Alright. Ooh, I wanna hear her. Huh, this trip is totally worth it. Compared to the Juming, the Lafu is so much livelier. But it's a shame the Lafu swordmasters don't seem that great. 
Uh, what should I say? Um, I don't know. Uh, that's how outsiders refer to my peers in the Juming Cloud Knights and the Artisanship Commission. We all train under Grandpa's guidance, learning the art of craftsmanship and swordplay. That's how we got that title, I guess. Mm, I see. Uh, just don't mention it in front of Grandpa. He always says that empty titles bring pointless challenges and conflicts. We Jooming Swordmasters pride ourselves on the success of the group over the individual. Uh, oh, okay. Glad to meet you too. Are you here to participate in the war dance? I'm just a tourist attending the ceremony, yeah. Hmm. So, you're not a participant? You look like you know your way around the fight. Yeah. Well, you can still sign up. The Cloud Knight's ring is always open to outsiders. <sighs> I have some things to do. Besides, little Yun Ching doesn't seem too happy about me tagging along. Uh, he shouldn't have said you stole his sword, but you did take his sword. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. I took it with my skills. So I guess you can say I'm a robber or something. How dare he imply I'm a thief? Totally different. Besides, the sword seems scared of its own master. I'd like to ask him. You claim to cherish your sword as your life. Yet you don't even recognize the state it's in right now? I didn't intend to keep his sword. I was planning to take this chance to return it to him. But now, I've changed my mind. I'll give that poor flying sword some proper maintenance. I won't consider returning the sword unless he learns how to say please, hello, thank you, and sorry. So he can forget about it for now. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yep, she left. Alright, let's hear these two. Oh shit, never mind. Why? <laughs> I'm sorry for Yang Ching's rudeness. Not at all. Taunted by Yun Li like that, even a training dummy would be angry. You've taught your apprentice well. If it were me in my younger days, I'm afraid I'd have drawn my sword and fought. Yen Ching can understand your concerns. On the other hand, Yun Li is still a naive girl who's only interested in swordplay. Honestly, I brought her here to participate in the war dance because I want to broaden her horizons. All right. What about you guys? Why? Hey, Don Hung. I thought all the Sienjo generals were like Jing Yuan. But that General Huayan, he looks so thin and scraggy, as if even a light breeze would knock him over. Is that old man really an arbiter general? Uh, don't underestimate it. Someone. Well, no. Don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, that old man might have some powers that we might not know. Well, each Shenzhou ship has its own division and specialty within the Alliance. Not all of the Arbiter Generals are good at leading the charge. You heard what Jin Yuan said, right? General Hua Yan was once the head of all the skilled craftsmen on the Zhu Ming. Oh, damn. Uh, don't you find it strange? Uh, do Sienjo people age? I rarely see any old people on the Sienjo ship, and when I do, they're usually travelers. But General Huayan looks like an ordinary old grandpa. Is he really a Sienjo general? Hmm, good question. He's right there. So why don't you ask him yourself? Oh, dang. To live a little longer. <laughs> we should leave. General Jing Yuan asked Yan Qing to entertain us, so obviously he has important matters to discuss. Alright.
This is the report Ching Zhu just sent me. Let me take a look. Hmm. Huh. What you find? Looks like the general has given me a tough challenge. He wants me to try and help put the IPC's mind at ease. Is this some kind of test from the general? Well, it's not exactly a test. As Cloud Knight officers, we not only learn the art of war and martial arts, but also occasionally have to handle diplomatic disputes. It's just, you know, talking things out isn't as straightforward as duking it out with weapons on the battlefield. This is especially true when you're up against the IPC, with their non-stop corporate babble. <sighs> well, let's not worry about that for now. Shall I take you to the inn? Alright, let's go. It is the Law Fu's honor to have you in attendance at the war dance. Yet, the fact that a simple martial arts ceremony has attracted esteemed generals from the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing implies intentions beyond mere spectating. Might there be any specific instructions from the marshal? Ooh. You're overthinking it, Jin Yuen. As I said, I'm here to broaden my granddaughter's horizons. I have no ulterior motives. He opened his eyes. However, I have no clue what the Yao Qing Arbiter General has in mind. Do you remember when you accepted this position? I told you that an Arbiter General's battlefield goes beyond the physical one. You'll need to lead and manage everything on the Xianzhou. The title of Arbiter General holds a weight far greater than its literal meaning. So many years have passed, and you've done well. However, longevity for the Xianzhou people can be a curse. Living too long means that every mistake you made will lurk in the shadows. And one day, they'll eventually catch up to you. Mm. Oh. The Marshal knows everything that has happened on the Lawful. As for the Merlin's Claw of the Yao Qing, she has come specifically for you. Oh. Speaking of which, why hasn't she arrived yet? They say the Merlin's Claw strikes like lightning. Being late isn't her style. That's not true, General Hua Yen. She's been here a while, but I'm sure you've heard of her unbridled nature. Oh, the characters! These guys! As soon as she disembarked from the Star Skiff, she mentioned having something to attend to, and simply disappeared. You must be the messengers from the Xianzhou Yao Qing, I assume. We are Jiao Cho and Moza, retainers of the Merlin's Claw. It's an honor to meet you in person, Arbiter Generals. Hmm. Now this is interesting. A guest who doesn't come to visit, but sends a message instead. Hmm. What does she mean? Tell me, what could be more important to her than coming here? Master heard about a spectacular view in Scale Gorge Waterscape. I believe she went there to enjoy it. A spectacular view? Ha! Did you hear that, Jing Yuen? This person is being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. Please do not misunderstand me, General Hua Yen. I was simply stating the truth. Master thought it would be inappropriate to keep you waiting, so she sent us here. To entertain, to entertain them? Once she's finished with admiring the scenery, she'll personally come and apologize to the both of you. Drat! I forgot to ask you and Lee to return my sword. Uh, hmm. I don't mind. I don't think you'll ever get your sword back. I'll go get it back for you. No need to bother. 
The Juming envoys won't be leaving the Lafu anytime soon. I'll ask for it later when we meet again. Uh, by the way, I don't know if it's just me, but the general seemed a little... Um, reserved? Could it be because of Elder Wyan's visit? Reserved? Really? Uh, maybe I'm just overthinking things. No, you're not. When I entered the Palace of Astrum, I realized that the messenger from the Xianzhou Zhu Ming was actually the Arbiter General himself. So, the messenger from the Xianzhou Yao Qing must be the Merlin's Claw herself, I presume. That's right. <sighs> well, that's what makes this entire thing so unusual. What's so unusual about it? They simply received an invitation from Jing Yuan, just like the crew, right? <sighs> the war dance is just a small festival. And now we have two Arbiter Generals from other Xianzhou ships here. <sighs> I'm afraid they're here for something more. Mm. <laughs> Maybe they've come to hold Jing Yuan accountable for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Hold him accountable? Uh, come on, didn't the Law Fu fall victim to the disciples of Sanctus Medicus and the Antimatter Legion? Why would they blame the victim? Don Shu's rebellion and Ventilia's scheming are merely one side of the story to the other Arbiter Generals of the Alliance. Only a single piece of incontrovertible evidence remains, creating an endless source of potential complications. The Ambrosial Arbor. Yes. It's undeniable that the Plague Mark, which was subdued by the Xianzhou Lo Fu, has resurfaced. But was it really a conspiracy instigated by the Antimatter Legion? Or does it indicate a traitorous intent from within the Lo Fu, implicating Jing Yuan himself? Once the spark of suspicion is kindled, it proves hard to extinguish. Ellie can vouch for Jing Ying Doc. No wonder we're called back to the summary. Hmm. Ah, what was I thinking? Seriously, here I was looking forward to a carefree and enjoyable trip. But it seems wherever we go, drama is just around the corner. Yeah. Ah, I was so excited. I thought those Arbiter Generals were just here to see the ceremony. By the way, I heard that an alchemist from the Juming diplomatic ship has arrived, and rumors say that she's to be the new Cauldron Master of the Alchemy Commission on the Wafu. Hmm, an alchemist from the Juming serving as the Cauldron Master on the Lofu? While it's not unheard of, the timing itself... Yeah. Thanks to your words, Mr. Don Hung. Now I finally see the underlying tensions. The General is under tremendous pressure right now, but I was completely oblivious to his troubles. Uh, how naive of me. Uh, come on, don't think like that. Leave the adult matters to the adults. Even if you wanted to do something for the General, it's not like you can do anything. <sighs> uh, did I say something wrong? Um... Miss March, just be quiet, uh... Um... Miss March is right. I don't have the skills to share the General's burdens at the moment. Still, I'll do my best to follow his instructions. Let's go. Once I've taken you to your accommodations, I need to go to the Artisanship Commission to handle the IPC's protest. Uh, he looks like he has a lot on his mind. We can't just let him go alone. Uh, why don't we accompany you to the Artisanship Commission? Well, we're going there. Uh, this is too much trouble. While I appreciate your kindness, dealing with the IPC's workers could be tricky. I'm afraid this will cause trouble for the Express. Oh, um, I thought we were going to do that debate thing that we did before on the other quest. Uh, no worries! We're pretty experienced in dealing with the IPC. You've heard of the Ten Stone Hearts? We've dealt with quite a few of them, right? I mean, yeah, that is true. We dealt with Topaz and Avery. I can't say his name. 
Man, I'm not good at saying people's names in this game. But, uh, yeah, we did bring them all. Hey, who's bragging? Anyway, this time it'll just be a few ordinary IPC workers. Surely you don't think they'll be even trickier than Aventurine, do you? Yeah, Aventurine, that's what I'm gonna say. Well, since you're willing to help, I won't decline your kindness. Let's head to the Artisanship Commission and meet them. Alright, let's go. Where is this? Let's go! Can I really reason with you, CM Joe people? Oh god, not you. I think I get it now. In your words, this is called looting a burning house, right? But I am trying to reason with you here. Ah, uh, not you. I just dealt with you just a while ago. That toxic voice sounds familiar. Haven't I heard it before in Arum Alley? Yeah, we dealt with him just a while ago. You know what? This isn't my first time dealing with the Skyfaring Commission. I can handle your unreasonable ways. But straight up snatching IPC cargo? Isn't that going a bit too far? <sighs> Just as I've said it many times already, once we've inspected the cargo and completed the security check, you can be on your way. Is there something wrong with your ears, or is it just your brain? I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm thinking clear. And my answer is crystal clear. Not a chance. Keep detaining my cargo, and I'll file a complaint directly with your generals. Ah. Yeah, I heard this off you about. Did I just hear a dog <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm doing this. You jerk. Who are you calling a dog? Wait. Why are you here? Yeah. You're staying on the Sienjo, are you? What terrible luck. Wherever you go, disasters aren't far behind. Aren't you the guest from the Astral Express? What brings you and Yan Ching to the Artisanship Commission? They're in oh, trouble? Oh, shoot. No, it's me. I'm the one in trouble. Looks like you've met this IPC worker before. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> I was sent here to deal with the IPC protest, Mishikwe. What's going on here? <sighs> As you know, this IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison and rescued by the Juming's diplomatic ship. Then the Cloud Knights were instructed to bring it back to the dock for repairs and inspections. And this is Mr. Scott, the person in charge of this transport ship. So you're Scott. I've heard her mention you. Weren't you kicked off the Lafu before? Why did you come back? Yeah. Like I wanted to come back. I thought I'd just dock at the harbor for repairs and leave this forsaken place for good. Little did I know, as soon as the ship entered the harbor, a bunch of Cloud Knights showed up and snatched all our cargo from the hold. What do you mean by snatched? I've told you a million times. It's a security check. Then why did you bring the cargo to the Artisanship Commission? You even brought in some shady craftsmen. It's obvious you're trying to steal the IPC's patented technology! Listen here. Firstly, the Skyfaring Commission detected dangerous items that could possibly be weapons in your cargo hold. That's why they called me here, to double check. Secondly, where the heck did you get the idea that I'm a shady craftsman? Even if there are dangerous items, what do they have to do with you? It's not even being shipped to the law, fool. We'll just fix the ship and be on our way. We won't unload our cargo here. But you'll have to stay in the port for several days before your ship is repaired and you can take off again. How can we just leave unchecked items sitting here? I understand, but we don't need to disassemble the cargo if it's just a security check, right? In most cases, we don't. However, our scans discovered that the cargo doesn't only contain machinery, but also some substance that resembles biological tissue. Mm. Biological tissue? Does this crate contain living things? I'm afraid we'll need to wait for the Alchemy Commission for further confirmation. In any case, 
According to our regulations, we need to unseal one of the crates for further examination. But this IPC specialist has been hindering us on the grounds of patent secrecy. The Alliance's regulations on biological products are very strict. Without further inspection, there is no way for the Skyfaring Commission to release the cargo. Oh, really? Fine! If anyone lays a finger on that shipment, they'll have me to deal with! It doesn't matter if it's mechanical or biological! It's none of your business! I'm filing a complaint against the Skyfaring Commission's ridiculous regulations! <sighs> this Mr. Scott seems stubborn and difficult to persuade. Honestly, I really don't want to have a vicious confrontation with the IPC. I'll shoot. I heard how you helped Aram Ali. The IPC representative back then was Mr. Scott, right? Since you've dealt with him before, it looks like I'll have to rely on you again. Oh, so I'm doing that debate? What are you guys whispering about over there? Just hurry up and give us back our cargo. Yep, I'm doing that debate. Good quality, good price. All right, where are everyone at? Okay. Let's talk to you guys. I can't, okay. All right, let's do that debate. Yeah. Oh, this is different. I gotta be careful then. As I recall, this guy won't listen to reason and can only be persuaded with intimidation. But he does seem to follow rules to some extent. Let's use that against him. Speaking of regulations, we have our own laws and regulations too. According to Article 4 of the Cienjo Alliance IPC Trade Consensus, the Alliance and IPC shall never infringe on each other's intellectual property rights. Hmm, what should I say? Hmm, the best way. sign a non-disclosure okay. agreement with you. That way, you won't have to worry about any infringements, right? We can sign a mutually acceptable non-disclosure agreement in accordance with the IPC's rules. Well, uh, that makes sense, but how can we trust you to honor the terms? <clears throat> Even if we set aside the secrecy of intellectual property, these prototypes built by the Intelligentsia Guild are incredibly valuable beyond your wildest imagination. If anything goes wrong, you won't be able to pay for it even with your lives. Mm. Um. Okay, I was curious. Um. Hey, with your lives and soon. Mm -hmm. Maybe this one. Can you give us okay. an exact amount, Mr. Scott? If there's any damage after the inspection, the express, uh, um, I mean the Skyfaring Commission will compensate you. The Skyfaring Commission. Yeah, they will compensate you. A detailed report of the damage is submitted. I don't doubt the financial strength of the Skyfaring Commission. However, this is not just about money. Besides, the cargo on this transport vessel belongs to the Intelligentsia Guild. If you want to inspect the cargo, shouldn't you at least call in a member of the Intelligentsia Guild to be present? Hmm. Mm. Okay, I'm trying to pick things. 
Maybe this one. According to the principle of territoriality, since your vessel is stranded on the Sienjo, the Skyfaring Commission has the right to inspect it. Indeed. According to Article 27 of the Sienjo Legal Code, all official and private goods upon entering the port shall be subject to inspection. Failure to submit to such inspection shall be deemed equivalent to the possession of unlawful items and shall be subject to legal ramifications. Okay. Ah, uh, my synesthesia beacon must not be working because I have no idea what you just said. Simply put, if you insist on hindering the inspection, we'll have to treat the cargo as unlawful items and confiscate it. Confiscate it? How how can you see and Joe people be so unreasonable? If this were pure point, an incoming cargo posed a safety risk, the IPC would take it in for containment and disposal, correct? Uh, th that's true, but the IPC sometimes makes exceptions. For example, they've always given special terms to CN Joe vessels. Yeah, yeah, we won. Well, you guys sure know how to argue your case. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, I got lucky. Fine. I'll allow you to do the security inspection. It's just that, uh, I need some time to sort things out. This is a big deal. Let me talk to headquarters first. So, Mr. Scott, are you just stalling for time and planning to leave the CN Joe as soon as your ship is repaired to avoid the Skyfaring Commission's inspection? Well, IPC staff are free to come and go, as long as they don't break any laws. Yeah, you've got some insight there. Who are you again? Ooh, who is this? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lingsha. Cauldron Master and Head of the Alchemy Commission on the Law Fu. Oh yeah, the new character. That's probably coming to the next, um... Well, whatever comes out the next game. Well, not the next game, uh, the next... You know what I mean, the next event. Could she be? Yeah, she's the new Cauldron Master assigned here from the Sien Zhou Ming. Mm-hmm. I received a report from the Artisanship Commission about cargo containing samples of unknown organisms. It said they needed help from the Alchemy Commission. I had nothing better to do, so I came myself. <laughs> it's fine, Mr. Scott. If you really don't want your cargo to be inspected, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter? How can you say that? Why are you being so nice all of a sudden, hmm? Well, since you're not going to check it, I'll take this crate and be on my way. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, sure. Why should I object? Not only this sample, but all the goods on the transport ship are yours to keep. Like I said, we won't inspect them. Something's off about this. Wait a minute! Well, that's more like it. If only the young displayed a more reasonable attitude, we could have sidestepped that altercation just now. Our ship will leave in a few days once the engines are repaired. Your ship can leave whenever you want, but I'm afraid I can't say the same for your cargo. Oh. According to the import and export regulation signed between the Sienjo and IPC, Biological shipments can only leave the port when they have confirmed to be of no threat, or when all biological activity expires. Ooh, ooh, got you there. Since we can't determine if your shipment is safe for the environment, I guess we'll have to wait for its biological activity to expire. Let me check the previous cases. Normally, it'll only take around 47 star calendar years. Oh, damn. <laughs> 47 years? Yeah. Why so surprised? You're still young and full of energy. I'm pretty sure you'll live a few more decades. Have some confidence in yourself. Ha! Typical of a long life species. Your words are dripping with sarcasm. While you may not care about time, I do. 
I'll be demanding double compensation from the Skyfaring Commission for every minute wasted! Sure thing, Mr. Scott. You seem pretty confident that your career and life will last long enough to witness this victory unfold. Oh. Uh, step aside, guys. Let them do the inspection. Uh, but, Mr. Scott... Come on, we're already in enough trouble. Just let them do the security inspection. And if needed, I can always grovel before the Intelligentsia Guild later. I'm just using my head for what it's apparently good for, right? Hmm. Well, at least you wish up for once. I'm saying this. Well, honestly, at least you're not as annoying as that woman. <laughs> Bro, just do the inspection. This lady is really something else. Is this the IPC product? Uh, uh, listen up! Any damages caused by inspections will be filed with the IPC! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Turn it off! I don't think so. Oh, dang. We're fighting now. Oh, dang, okay. Well, how unexpected. That was a surprise. Time to test our rapport. Dreams do come true. All right, there. Were you seriously planning to leave this stuff unchecked at the dock for days? That's way too dangerous. I, I had no idea about it. You must have accidentally triggered the cargo's defense program! I don't think trying to shift the blame is a wise choice. But seriously, I don't know why that thing suddenly started moving! I swear on the Amber Lord! Enough. Miss Shikwe, please escort our IPC guest to the Skyfaring Commission. I'm on it. Please follow me, Mr. Scott. Gentlemen, our preliminary inspection shows that there is indeed hidden biological tissues inside. Just like the craftsmen feared. I can't even tell if it's ingenium or biological in nature. Mm. By the way, uh, why do you say that? Yeah. The core of this device is what they call wetware in industry slang. To put it simply, this machine operates with a kind of biological nerve as its control center. I'll take some samples for the alchemist to analyze and figure out where the biological tissue comes from. Mm. Why would the Intelligentsia Guild use such unethical technology? Perhaps they're trying to create a new weapon? Whatever the reason is, it's probably why the Borison attacked the ship. No wonder the IPC were trying to obstruct our inspection. I'll contact the Ten Lords Commission and ask the judges to come and give their final verdict on this. According to our rules, all prisoners and weapons involving dangerous creatures must be taken to the Shackling Prison for further sentencing. After all, it's the safest place on the Lafu. As for you, Mr. Craftsman, please go with the Cloud Knights and explain the situation to the judge. I had a feeling that the IPC members would cause trouble, but I didn't think they'd be this tricky. Thanks for your help, Miss Lingsha. Yeah, thanks. I should thank you for saving my life. Your sword skills were impressive. Taking down that big guy. 
I thought the General's retainers were all burly martial masters. I didn't expect Yin Ching to be so... Uh, young, cute, mature, or mini sure. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> As for you, you must be the guests from the Astral Express, right? Saving the Lafu from that crisis. It's so impressive. <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. Really. It's still early. So why don't we get some tea at the Alchemy Commission? We can discuss your suggestions for revitalizing the Commission. Uh, I'd be happy to accept your invitation. And you three are coming too, right? Yeah. Alright. Nothing to see here. These machines are to be shut down. Keep your distance until then. Alright. Now we'll go over the way over there. Oh, she's here. Wait, can we talk to her? Hey! Oh, you're back! Why didn't you say anything at the group chat? I'm on duty. Let's catch up later. Oh, shoot. Get out. I'm carrying out my sacred duty. Stop hanging around here and find something better to do. And once I'm done in a few days, call up little Gwei and Wawa, and let's grab a meal at Aram Alley. It's been ages since we hung out. Goodbye. Wait, hold on. Please do not hinder me carrying out my sacred duty. We can discuss whatever you want after my shift. All right. Well, then she to see her. I'm here to pay my respects. All these Bam. years, and the view at the Alchemy Commission hasn't changed a bit. The tides come and go, but the ancient sea remains the same. For us, Vidyadara, there's nothing more nostalgic than our homeland. You're a Lofu native, Miss Lingsha? Yes. I grew up here, listening to the sound of waves while researching prescriptions with my mentors and peers at the Alchemy Commission. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Everything changes, but somehow remains familiar. Just like you, Don Hung, I traveled far from home, and now I've returned. Seeing the familiar scenery brings back a hint of nostalgia. Uh, the view here would be even better without the Ambrosial Arbor. Oh, really? I think that towering tree looks pretty impressive. Even if it's impressive, it's a plague mark. The Sienjo have been fighting abominations for thousands of years. And now that the Ambrosial Arbor has been reborn, it's only natural for everyone to feel uneasy. Well, once a seed is planted, no matter how long it takes, it'll eventually sprout and bear fruit. Mm -hmm. In my humble opinion. The rebirth of the Ambrosial Arbor and the resurgence of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus were inevitable. The seed was already planted when the ancestors of the Sienjo sought immortality. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I keep doing right. that. Well, since you went through the entire Ambrosial Arbor crisis firsthand, Dan Hung and Lieutenant Yan Ching, I'd like to discuss something with you. Well, what is it? What would you like to discuss, Miss Lingxia? I was lucky enough to be chosen by the Alliance to come in and clean up all the old grime in the Alchemy Commission. Honestly, the Alchemy Commission is riddled with problems and has reached a point where fixing it seems impossible. I'm looking to remedy this problem, but was wondering if you could provide any insights. Well... Even though I'm a Vidyadarin like you, I'm an outsider, just like my companions here. I can't really say much about a remedy, but I do have a piece of advice, Miss Lingxia. The Vidyadara and the Alchemy Commission on the Lo Fu have always been intricately connected. If you cannot distance yourself from these ties, Miss Lingxia, 
Changing the situation within the Alchemy Commission may be quite challenging. I may not know about politics, but I do know that the disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been operating within the Alchemy Commission for years. If you're determined to root them out, maybe you should discuss it with the General. I see. Thank you for your valuable insights. <sighs> While the Lux Arrow from the Rainbow possesses unparalleled power to sever the Ambrosial Arbor, it can't sever mortals' desire to prolong their existence. Just like how the Cloud Knights can eliminate the remnants of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but are unable to calm the hearts and minds of the people within the Alchemy Commission. Our Sienjo forebears knew this well, and that's why they entrusted the duty of guarding the roots of the Arbor to the Vidyadara. However, the Vidyadara are still only mortal beings. Thirty years ago, my mentor served as Alchemy Commission's Cauldron Master. She recognized the emerging undercurrents and sought to cleanse the source of the disturbance. Unfortunately, even though she was skilled in the art of healing, she didn't understand the human heart or how to eliminate the sickness lurking within the depths of the Alchemy Commission. In the end, she was framed and exiled to the Juming. I was also implicated and had to leave the Lafu. And guess who arbitrated the case and handed down the sentence? None other than General Jing Yuan himself. What? You heard it right. The ones responsible for the corruption in the Alchemy Commission are not just the remnants of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but even the Divine Foresight himself. Dang. Alas, why is your face turning pale, Yen Qing? Don't worry about it. I understand that when someone holds a position of power, they may sometimes have to make tough decisions. I won't hold any personal grudges against him. Besides, at our age, holding personal grudges is a luxury we can't afford. Lingxia, you're back! Ugh, I've been waiting ages for you! Uh-oh. It's there. Yun Li! Why aren't you with your grandpa? What brings you to the Alchemy Commission? Well, let me take this opportunity to introduce you to Yan Qing. They know each other. <sighs> what a small world. <laughs> yeah. You! You stole my sword! Give it back! <sighs> I see. Let's skip the introduction part then. <sighs> Why do I keep bumping into you? Are you stalking me or something? <laughs> what? Of course not. Unlike you, Miss Yun Li, I have important things to take care of. You, on the other hand, seem to have all the time in the world to wander around without returning my sword. <laughs> Grandpa used to say that a sword reflects its master. I talked to your sword, and it told me that you've been distracted. You hesitate when you should strike, and you struggle to stay calm when your sword is unsheathed. <laughs> now that I see you again, I realize your sword was right. It wasn't me who took your sword. It was you who lost focus. Do you really expect me to believe that nonsense? I've been taking it easy on you because you're a guest from the Juming. But you're not taking the hint. Don't people from the Juming know you're supposed to return what you've borrowed? <laughs> just look at this flying sword. Even if I gave it back to you now, it'd just be taken away again in a few hours. You know the Cloud Knight saying, a Cloud Knight must never let slip their weapon. Yes? Well, sure, I can give it back to you now. But on the battlefield, that's a whole different story. I'm sorry. Oh. Fine! You don't have to give it back, because I'll take it back myself! Ah, dang, this is getting feisty. Okay, maybe I should have called the generals. Uh, 
Oh, to be young at um, what? No, oh, this is the uh, Lord Dance. Uh, mm, I'm saying this. Between these two, who do you think is tougher, Don Hung? Don't get me wrong. I'm just curious. Hmm. You... <sighs> get ready to separate them. All right. It is my first day at the Alchemy Commission. A brawl is definitely not how I imagine celebrating it. <laughs> well, since you don't approve, I won't draw my sword here. I didn't mean it in that way. Since you've already drawn your swords, you'd be disappointed if you didn't get to test one another, right? I've received reports that the delves near the Alchemy Commission are still infested with abominations. Seems like my predecessors left quite a mess. So, if you two want to determine who's better, why not focus on them instead of each other? Hmm. Clearing out some abominations? <sighs> Sounds boring. It's the Cloud Knight's duty to eliminate those abominations. You don't have to ask me twice, Miss Lingxia. I'll help you get rid of them. Oh, you think you're the only one who knows how to behave? If Lingxia needs anything, I'll gladly draw my sword and help her out. It's so heartwarming to see both of you being so sweet and caring. So then, shall we get going? Hey, yeah, let's go! Kick some ass. Ever since the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were eradicated, their experimental abominations have been festering here. If you want a contest, I'll be the referee. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. <sighs> Ling Sha, as always, you're still an expert in making unpaid work sound so noble and grand. <sighs> it's for your own good, little Yunli. While you desire to compete against each other, I don't want to see either of you getting hurt. That's really thoughtful of you, Cauldron Master. So, are you both ready? Ooh, I want to see what happens. Ooh, ooh, I get to play as him? Alright. I would play, play as the other girl, but man. Ugh. Looks like my predecessors left quite a mess. Let me say it again. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. Be careful when you draw your swords and make sure you don't hurt each other. All right, we won't. Can we start now, Lingxia? Oh, okay. All right, then. Is set. Let the show begin. Stay in step. Dreams do come true. Sam in position. Until everything burns to ashes. Fight to live. I hit the mark. I didn't expect someone who can't even hold on to his sword to actually have some skill. Oh, dang. <laughs> You've got style with those moves. Oh, dang. But you're not striking where it counts. <laughs> it's such a shame to see you misuse your sword like that. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Head your bets. Uh huh. Blade and flight. Setting the scene Take your positions. Practice is over. Swords descend! <laughs> Let's improvise. The mood is set. Let the show begin! It's on me. 
called Dane. I could just suck her out just like that. Duck them out just like that. Um. Strike the part. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. This shit gonna take. Let's improvise. A one time enemy. Hedge your bets. Huh? <laughs> Sam in position. Attack. Blade and flight. <laughs> sure, I'll play it. Spend freely. Joining the battle. <clears throat> Man, I, I think we lost. See? I won. Your technique was all over the place. And you relied too much on speed. Is this really all the Cloud Knights of the Lawfu can muster? <laughs> so disappointing. All you did was chop down a few monsters. Don't get carried away with yourself. Oh. Well then I'll give you a chance. Defeat me or hand over all your swords. If you're trying to pick a fight, just ask, because I'm ready for you. Shoot. Well fought, my young friends. She came out of nowhere. However, both of you have shortcomings. One of you focuses on dodging and weaving, while the other relies on brute strength, trying to take down targets with a single strike. Who are you? Me. I'm just a patient seeking medicine from the Alchemy Commission. A passerby, if you will. I thought I'd see my fill of impressive fights during the war dance. Yet here I am, able to witness a remarkable fight at the Alchemy Commission, of all places. Well, the Lawfu is never short of surprises. However, 
I have a small suggestion for you. Why don't you settle this dispute fair and square in the war dance's ring? That way, you can resolve your differences with a proper duel and put your grudges behind you. Grudges? Uh, no, not at all. Yunli and I, we were just sparring. <laughs> sparring? You summoned your flying swords and she swung her sword with full strength. No grudges between you. Mm, I don't believe it. Aha! What brings you here, Lady Feishao? Have you finished your health consultation with the Dragon Lady? Dragon Lady? Oh, I know. Feishao? Grandpa always talks about you. Could it be that you are... The Merlin's Claw of the Sanjo Yao Ching? Oh, yeah, yeah, so it's her. Hmm. Looks like I'm quite famous on the Sanjo Lafu, too. Of course, everyone has heard of the great general. Known to all, and unbeknown to none. Great general? Isn't that title a bit too narcissistic? Mm, I don't like it. Ooh, I heard there's a dozing general on the Lafu. So I came up with a humble nickname for myself. The Lacking General. Lacking in worries, regrets, and rivals. You just wink. <laughs> Sounds much better, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a befitting title that sounds both humble and impressive. Now that the sparring session is over, Yanqing and Yunli, Shouldn't you politely thank General Feishao for her guidance and bury the hatchet? Uh, here's your sword. Keep it safe. Or it might get taken away again. <laughs> By the way, we haven't settled the score yet. I'll defeat you fair and square next time we fight. Ooh. This is how she apologizes? Hmm. <sighs> Now that I finally got my sword back, I should report to the Seat of Divine Foresight. I'll take my leave, General Feishao. Oh, by the way, Miss Lingxia, if you've got some free time, I'd like to invite you to the Seat of Divine Foresight for a chat with General Jingyuan. I think there's more to those personal grudges you mentioned earlier. Thanks for stepping in, General Feishao. Otherwise, I'd have had to knock them out with my incense. Ooh. Not at all. Just doing what you asked. How about we call it even as payment for the healer lady's consultation? Sorry, but even a general needs to pay their bills. We don't do credit here. And let's not forget... You'd have been waiting decades for a chance to see the Dragon Lady if it weren't for me. Well, you can always send the bill to the Seat of Divine Foresight and say it's for mentoring those kids. After all, it was quite the effort splitting them up. I nearly had to get tough. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a spot and get some fresh air. Yeah, let's go. Back already? You've met with Jing Yuan and wandered around for a few hours. So, what do you think? It appears that the Divine Foresight is using this war dance as a show of strength to convince everyone that the Law Fu is prospering after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. But... I know you're going to say but, right? But... The influx of people attending the war dance is like a breeding ground for disorder and rumors. One wrong move, and the Lawfu could be in a world of chaos. The Cloud Knights on the streets remain vigilant, so at the very least, General Jing Yuan is aware of this. As for other matters, I'm unable to say. 
I prefer to be excused from future meetings with generals. I'm just a military healer. And now all of a sudden I'm thrust onto the center stage having cordial chats with two generals? My work doesn't lend itself to being in the limelight either. Just stop whining. At least you're in one piece, right? Before getting in touch with General Jing Yuan, I wanted to put aside my assumptions and see his momentum. That includes the overall bearing of the Cloud Knights on the street, what people are saying, and how those close to him behave. The might of an army dwells not within its pawns, but within the force of its collective momentum. Recognizing this fact reveals the true measure of power. <laughs> Thanks for enlightening me, General. A perfectly clear statement turned confusing thanks to your translation. <sighs> you made me lose where I was now. Anyway, this is how I operate in battle, so you might as well get used to it. Are you treating General Jingyuan as your enemy? Mm. The longest serving general of the Xianzhou Lafu. Do you think he'd have only a few enemies? By the way, General. You met the healer lady, yes? Could you show me the medicine she prescribed you? Well, the healer lady couldn't do anything about my condition. She just told me to enjoy some tasty food. <laughs> <sighs> so not even the famed healer lady could help? <sighs> Don't worry. I'll fulfill my promise and find a way to cure you. Actually, I've found some leads. Well, life and death, Zhao Cho. It's all predetermined. Upon starting my military career, I made a pledge that the rest of my life would be dedicated to being the Xianzhou's spearhead, hunting down the abominations of abundance till the end of my days. Dang, this is cool. As long as I can fulfill that deep-seated desire, I don't care how long I live. You asked if I view General Jing Yuan as my enemy. No. My real enemy has always been myself. Enjoy some tasty food. So, What's for dinner tonight? Jeez. You really know how to read the room, don't you? You guys figure it out for yourselves. I'm due to catch up with an old war friend I've not seen for quite a long time. Wait, what happened to Don Hung? Oh, there he is. Was that the Yao Qing general who just dropped in out of nowhere? Oh, she's so awesome. I mean, when Yun Li swung that massive sword, she just casually blocked her attack with ease. <sighs> and mine too. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But to go up against Yun Li is quite impressive, you know? That aura of heroism and grace. It almost makes me want to learn Sienjo swordplay. Ah, uh, hopefully. Well, it's going to happen either way. You think so too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with those moves were <laughs> fabulous. Hmm, the great general is totally something else. Yeah, uh, let me see. I agree. General Fei Xiao is indeed impressive. Uh, I was talking about Yan Qing, actually. <laughs> Thanks for the kind words, Miss March. The war dance is coming up, and I've been chosen to represent the Cloud Knights in the ceremony. I've had my fair share of defeats lately, and even though I know there are always more skilled sword masters out there, seeing General Fei Xiao's skills today has made me feel a bit uneasy again. Don't underestimate yourself. After all, generals won't fight in the ring during the war dance. 
Just remember the state of mind you had when you single-handedly took on me and Blade, putting life and death aside. With that mindset, you can prevail against most challengers. Yeah. I see. Thanks for the advice, Master Don Hung. By the way, now that today's events are over, General Jing Yuan wants to invite all of you to the seat of divine foresight. He has something important to discuss. Okay. Something important. I bet it's about how to deal with the generals from the Yao Qing and the Ju Ming. I really don't want to get caught up in grown-up games so soon. I just hope Generals Fei Xiao and Hui An can see the truth. We don't need any more chaos on the Lafu before the war dance. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's really over there. Okay, Extractor clean there. I don't believe in ghosts. Okay. Would you like me to relay your message? Yeah, I'm going the fuck up there. All right, the old guy and the general's here. It's all her too. <laughs> Earlier at the Palace of Astrum. I introduced these guests from the Astral Express to you, Elder Huayan. But with all the people around, we only exchanged pleasantries. Now, I'd like to officially introduce them to you. Ugh. Yep, that's us. These three braved great dangers, accompanying me to perilous places, defeating the chief culprit Vantilia, and uncovering the conspiracies of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Mm -hmm. That's all us. More. Please, feel free to ask us. Well, I skimmed through the reports about the Arbor's rebirth from the Master Diviner Hu Xuin. She's been summoned to the Yu Chui for questioning. There are a lot of doubts within the Alliance about this whole situation. But despite all that, I believe in you. Since you joined the ranks, you have repeatedly achieved remarkable feats. After the High Cloud Quintet each went their separate ways, despite the many criticisms within the Alliance, the Marshal still stood firm against the dissenting voices and entrusted the Lawfu to you. Over the years, you've served the Alliance with loyalty and wisdom. You've taken down abominations in Thalassa, Rescued the Xianzhou Yuchui from a siege and destroyed the demonic planet summoned by the denizens of abundance. I still remember those battles vividly. There are fools who doubt your loyalty. They're happy to see the divine foresight fail because it gives them some kind of sick satisfaction. They haven't achieved anything of their own. So they feed off the failures of others. But I've seen enough failures in my time. And I want to believe that your loyalty has never wavered. So General Fei Xiao of the Yao Qing is the only one investigating the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis on behalf of the Alliance? Mm. <sighs> no, no. I am too. Well. This old man's words always catch me off guard. Yeah. The marshal ordered me to come to the Xianzhou Lafu. But the document only says, attend the war dance and listen to Fei Shao's questioning. What does that mean? Yeah. Ah, uh, since it's an order, do we need to step aside? No Let's need for that. You're all important witnesses. The Marshal is well aware of Jing Yuen's purpose in holding the ceremony, 
and understands the situation he is facing. She mentioned it because she believes both issues are important. Mm. Thanks for your kindness and sincerity, Elder Huayan. But is it appropriate to tell everyone here about the Marshal's orders? By introducing the Express's witnesses to me alone, aren't you aiming to discern the intentions behind both my actions and Fei Shao's? And whether there's any discord between us? Well, since I'm being open and honest with you, I encourage you young folk to do the same. As for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, all I need to do is listen. General Feishao will be the one asking the questions. To be honest, I'm more concerned about the timely start of the war dance. Oh, by the way, I've prepared a gift for the war dance. Oh, a gift. But we really can't talk to her, can we? What kind of gift? Yes. It's this case right here. Mm. There will be numerous contests and celebrations during the war dance, and the main event will be the Ringmaster's Challenge. The host will dispatch a skilled warrior to take on challengers from all over the cosmos, showcasing the excellent martial arts of the Sienjo Lawfu. When you mentioned that the Astral Express would be attending the ceremony, I thought the High Elder of the Lawfu would be the Ringmaster. <laughs> you humor me, Elder Huayan. The Healer Lady is just a young lady who knows nothing about martial arts. How can I assign her as the Ringmaster? Wait, is that one of us? Huh. I'm no match to you when it comes to joking. What's this box for? Why don't you open it, General Huayan? This sword case is intended for the war dance's award. It's empty now, but in a few days, a precious sword will be delivered and stored inside. Mm. I don't mean to boast about our skills, but this sword represents the pinnacle of the Ju Ming's craftsmanship. It has a legendary history, full of heroic tales from foreign lands, Tales that are too detailed to be summarized in just a few words. Since the delegation delivering the sword hasn't arrived yet, I'll just leave the case here for now. I've been wondering who would be worthy of such a sword. And then it hit me. I can award it to the champion of the Ringmaster's Challenge. The ceremony's champion is sure to be a perfect match for the sword. Moreover, I hear that Yen Xing is an excellent swordmaster, and that he will be representing the Lawfu as the ringmaster, so it seems like a perfect gift for him. Thank you for your generosity, Elder Huayan. If you want to give me a sword, just say the word, Grandpa. No need to beat around the bush. <laughs> You've got confidence, my girl. But I don't think you can best Yen Jing. I know you're all about swords, Miss Yunli. It's just a shame that it's the sword that ultimately chooses its rightful master. Yeah, and even if someone gets their hands on such a precious sword, it'll probably end up in someone else's. The outcome of our duel at the Alchemy Commission is still up in the air. Since you're interested, why don't you represent the Xianzhou Juming and challenge me in the ring? That's exactly what I had in mind. Nobody knows who's gonna come out on top. It could be me, could be someone else. It'll probably be me. But whatever happens, it won't be him. Hmm, I'll say, uh, I'm sorry if it was fight. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, not to be rude or anything, we've been watching their drama. I'm dying to find out who beats who. Yeah. Hmm, <sighs> quiet down. We have other guests here. I've prepared this sword to add some excitement to the ceremony, not to have you two squabble. <laughs> it's not a good look for the Alliance. While you both seem confident that you'll win, you need to remember there can only be one winner and one loser in the ring, which could lead to hard feelings. 
Actually, I have an idea. We don't know who the winner will be, and it might not be either of you. But if you're eyeing that prize, you'll need to work together. I want you to take on an apprentice who will take part in the war dance and win at least one match. Really? How does that make sense? <laughs> in my humble opinion, while a Cloud Knight is commendable by securing victories, it's even more so to pass on your skills and spread the way of swordplay. I'd be greatly pleased if this apprentice could represent the Express in the war dance by displaying their Cloud Knight flair and prowess. Well, Elder Huayan's idea is quite interesting. Imparting swordplay skills requires teamwork, and both the winner and the loser will learn a valuable lesson regardless of the outcome. The question is, whom should the two of them take as an apprentice? March 7th. Oh, yep. <laughs> uh, uh, huh? Who? Wait, me? I noticed just now that Miss March seemed quite interested in the outcome of your sword fight. So I thought, why not teach her the art of sword play? Uh, oh, wait, are you serious, General? Why am I being dragged into this all of a sudden? I've never practiced sword play before. I'm a total newbie. You really think I can learn it? Well, you'll probably realize I have no hope and give up on me. And that'd be so embarrassing. Hmm. Uh, why don't, um... I'm saying this, yeah. Isn't this a perfect chance for you? I remember you mentioning that you wanted to learn some sword moves. Yeah, I did say that. But this is all happening so quickly, don't you think? Miss March is like a piece of jade in the rough, just waiting to be shaped. The war dance is the perfect opportunity to see what heights she can reach. I appreciate your kind words, General Yan, but won't teaching me swordplay be a waste of Yanqing and Yunli's time? They should be preparing for the ceremony. Plus, I heard that each swordmaster has their own special moves. What if they let something slip while teaching me? If everyone knows each other's tactics, won't that make it hard to catch people off guard during the war dance? <sighs> That's considerate of you, March 7th. But don't worry. It'll take you at least a decade of hard training before you can even start learning special moves. No need to freak out. A few Jooming swordplay tricks will mean you'll be more than equipped. Uh, really? Looks like March's curiosity has been piqued. Mm. Yep. <laughs> the whole point is to know each other's moves. Defeating your opponent in just one move? How boring would that be? <laughs> Plus, what really decides a swordsman's fate isn't some special move. It's the solid fundamentals. So Miss Yunli has already agreed. What do you say, Yang Ching? General, I, I haven't graduated yet. How can I be qualified to teach swordplay to others? Huh. So you're admitting your defeat, huh? If you're not even confident to teach, why don't you let me be the ringmaster instead? Yang Cheng, teaching an apprentice is also a way of honing your own skills and gaining insights. You've been an apprentice for years. It's about time you looked at swordplay from another perspective. I see, General. Then count me in. Now that Yang Ching has agreed too, it all comes down to Miss March giving her nod. <sighs> it's up to you to make the final decision, March. Yep. Ah, uh, time for you to become the best swordsman on the Express. <laughs> it won't be a walk in the park, that's for sure. It's up to you. I'll say this. At least that way, I won't have to worry about you accidentally shooting me in the butt all the time. <laughs> hey, I've never missed my target. <laughs> then 
I'm on board. Thank you for your kindness, General Huayan. Great. Starting tomorrow, Yen Ching and Yun Li will teach you the basics of the Cloud Knight's swordplay. Yeah. Yun Li and I will head out and purchase some sword practice equipment for Miss March. Think of it as a little initiation gift. <laughs> you're too kind. Oh, wait, you're giving me a gift? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Ah, General Huayan's gone. Wait, why does something feel off about what we talked about? <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we strayed off topic. How did things even get to this point? Yeah, life is always like this, my friend. Yeah, I brought you here because the General said he had some important matters to discuss. But how in the world did Yoon Lee and I suddenly become Miss March's swordplay mentors? Because... General Hua Yan wants us to stick around on the Law Fu for some time. Ooh. But aren't we here to tame the Sun Warning anyway? But from his point of view, we're no different from all the other tourists who may leave at any time. Yeah. Since the crew's actions were mentioned in the Law Fu's operations log were given to the Alliance, he probably wants to see firsthand if we're as capable as to report claims, or if we're just some made-up excuse to save face. And he wants to see it for himself during the war dance. Which is why he even dragged Yun Li into this. What began as a simple contest between two sword masters has <laughs> now evolved into you two collaborating to mentor March. Helder Huayan is still that tricky general who likes to give everyone a headache. Hey. My apologies. Truth be told, I invited all of you to the ceremony because. I wished for you to act as my witnesses. Now I apologize for not disclosing this information earlier. Yeah, figures. In the coming weeks, I'll also invite all of you to a meeting with General Fei Xiao, where you may need to answer her questions and clear up any doubts she might have. So please, be prepared for the meeting. No worries, answer a few questions is no big deal. Perhaps we should just uh, pack up and leave tonight. <laughs> okay, no, hell no, we're not saying that. Don't worry, General. No matter what happens, I'm prepared to stay here as the Express's witness and answer any questions. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. General, I know there isn't much I can do to share your burden. But... Hmm? As the Lawfu Ringmaster, I won't let anyone defeat me in the war dance. <laughs> I know. This is crazy. Can't believe I have to wait the next event. The illustrious Merlin's Claw waiting for me? And for so long, too? It's quite an honor. It's been a while, General Feishao. It's been 30 years since we last saw each other. Right, Yukong? Yes. Back then, you were the vanguard of the Yao Qing's verdant knights. And I was a pilot of the La Fu's Rainbow Orbit Fleet. Who would have thought that upon meeting again, you'd be a general, and I'd have given up flying? It really does feel... Oh, shoot, damn it. Well, I wouldn't say I haven't seen you in 30 years. After all, your great victories are announced through the Yellow Bell Resonance System every day. So I'm well aware of your great feats. How's your health holding up? Still stable, I suppose. Do you still remember the medic who saved me in battle? That healer with the odd name and peculiar temperament. What was his name again? Was it Pichu? Or Kachyo? Pichu? That sounds like Pikachu at that moment. 
Jiao Cho. He's been my retainer and personal healer, delegated by the Alchemy Commission from the Xianzhou Yao Ching. Over the years, he's dedicated himself to managing my condition. It's thanks to him that I'm still in good health today. Given my background, I'm happy to have made it this far. I'm relieved to know that you're safe and sound. Well then, since you and Elder Hua Yen are here, I imagine you must have received orders from the Marshal? As your friend, may I ask how the Alliance intends to punish the General of the Law Fu? The Arbor's rebirth has frightened the Elders who lurk behind the scenes. They fear the resurgence of abominations, much like what happened 30 years ago. Although the reports from the Law Fu explained all the details, we don't know if the Ruin Legion really invaded, or how exactly the Stellaron Hunters and the Astral Express became involved. This puzzle has many missing pieces. As you know, the fugitive Jing Liu, who mysteriously disappeared many years ago, has resurfaced. This time, she has brought along an outworlder and a coffin, claiming to offer the Marshal a method to fight against the Eons. The Law Fu Preceptor has also leveled accusations against Jing Yuan for neglecting the Alliance's principles. She asserts that Jing Yuan enabled the exiled Imbibitor Lune to re-enter the Lafu, thereby unlocking the Lunarescent Deaths within Scale Gorge Waterscape, which in turn disrupted the Vidyadara's dutiful watch over the Ambrosial Arbor. It is for these reasons that I have come here to the Lafu today. Well, duty calls. Perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned all of this to an uninvolved person, but since we once fought together, I didn't want to keep you in the dark. Perhaps pretending you didn't hear any of this would be for the best. I understand. I'm sorry. I was out of line. I know I shouldn't be defending General Jing Yuan right now, but... Well, you know how I am. The Law Fu has enjoyed centuries of stability since the end of the sedition of Imbibitor Lune, much of which can be attributed to General Jing Yuan's masterful strategizing. Unfortunately, for long life species, enduring through the ages always culminates in a failure that undoes all previous achievements, a moment that our adversaries relish. That's true. And that's why I'm also here for another purpose. To visit Hule. Hule? You mean that Hule? The Borison Warhead? The same Hule who has been imprisoned in the Shackling Prison for over seven centuries? Dang, this guy looks like a beast. Probably another boss fight we're probably gonna do. The nemesis of the Foxians who will never be forgiven and shall be imprisoned until the end of the cosmos. I can't quite remember the exact wording, but yes, the very same Hule. Usually, only emissaries from the Xianzhou Yao Ching Skyfaring Commission visit him once every century. Why do you have to visit him now of all times? The Foxians and the Alliance made a pact to combat the Abominations, aiming to achieve justice and free their kin. That werewolf monster is to be forever imprisoned in the dark recesses of the Shackling Prison, facing unending retribution. Given the situation on the Law Fu, those on the Yao Ching are concerned about Hule's imprisonment. I'm afraid that the routine visit every century is no longer sufficient to ease their concerns. That's why I was sent here. To reassure them. 
it's all bad news. Well, not everything. There might be a silver lining. Oh, by the way, I found some clues about the thing you asked for. Huh. Tell me more. The Verdant Knights followed the route you mentioned and discovered the wreckage of the Whistling Flame ship. Unfortunately, there were no survivors and no cargo. Dang. However, someone had already been on the scene before we arrived. Our people? Or someone from the IPC? No, neither. Yu Kong, have you heard of a person named Ron May? Oh, shoot. This is big. Oh, this is big. No. Oh. What's she doing, though? We gotta find Mr. Yang. And he would call. I'm still feeling sleepy. Hmm? Did I oversleep? Where did March and Don Hung go? Alright, they're over there. Alright, give me a second real fast. Oh, this is going to be crazy.